efficiency, and he's got a host of outstanding receivers led by number eight, Terry Anthony. But the main man is Deion Sanders. 14 career interceptions. He's the nation's leading punt returner. They call him primetime, and he's on primetime next. And we welcome you to Doak Campbell Stadium in Tallahassee, Florida, where tonight the Gators of the University of Florida take on the fifth-ranked Seminoles of Florida State University. Hi, everybody. I'm Roger Twidle, and welcome to our presentation of CFA football. On October the 8th, both of these teams had 5-1 and one records, and they've taken drastically different routes to where they're at right now. Florida State at 9-1, and one, Florida at 6-4. and four. Both are bowl-bound, but... Florida, of course, has had their problems this year. This is the final regular season meeting, and of course, always a very important game, the 31st meeting between these two teams. Let's bring in now a man who graduated from Florida State University. He coached here, never got to play against Florida, and of course, I'm talking about Lee Corso. Lee, this is a relatively new series yeah. for a traditional rivalry. Well, it started in 1958, and Florida State in 1958 had two things, beautiful women and a great band, but not much of a football game. So it wasn't a big game to Florida until Florida started getting beat by Florida State. Now it's an important game for both teams. This is, of course, the last regular season game. As I mentioned, both teams bowl bound. The bodies are banged up. And, and speaking of bodies, uh, football players uh, have a lot of different parts of their body, don't they? And a lot of the parts of this ball game are key to it. Let's take a look at some of them. Right there is the elbow of Oliver, the free safety. If he plays, which he will, he's a tremendous free safety. Second, the eyes of the quarterback from Florida, Morris. He telegraphs his passes. Florida State looks like they can intercept a lot of passes. Next, the right knee of Emmett Smith. Emmett Smith is a great football player. With Emmett Smith, Florida's an average football player. They become a great team when he's well. Last but not least, the waistline of Galen Hall. I know this is crazy, but I think he lost 37 pounds. He might have saved his job. People said he didn't look like the Florida coach. And I said to him, the guy won 16 games in a row. You never mentioned his body then. But the body of Florida State has been looking very good ever since that opening season loss to Miami. Yeah, and they got a good body, too. Let's take a look first. The arm of the quarterback Ferguson. He needs to throw the football because Florida has a tremendous front line on defense. Next, we look at the legs of Sammy Smith. Sammy Smith might turn pro. Why? Number one, Sanders is going to win the Heisman Trophy. Number two, he's married, got a daughter, needs the money. And number three, why mess around with college football when he can be a great pro? Next, we look at the brain of Bobby Bowden. Nobody calls a game better on the sideline than Bobby Bowden. And last but not least, the mouth of Deion Sanders. He's been shooting his mouth off all this week about how great he is and what's going to happen. That's easy for Sanders, it says. He's 15 yards downfield. Those linemen are probably saying, shh. Not so loud, Sanders. Yeah, but Sanders has been backing it up all year. We got a great seat here for this game right on the 50-yard line. Chris Fowler's working with us tonight. Chris, you've got a good vantage point, too. I sure do, Roger. I'm rising up above the scoreboard here. Got a great view over Doak Campbell Stadium and also North Florida. Here I am up here. Keep in mind, folks, this is the biggest night of the year for football in this part of the country. This is one of those rivalries where a hate has built up over the years. It all started for Florida State in 1958, the very first game. Things got so frenzied leading up to the game, they almost had to cancel classes that week. And the folks in Garnet and Gold have been that revved up ever since. For Florida, as Lee mentioned, they started to get involved in 1964 when Florida State first beat them. And I'll tell you, there's a hatred on the Florida side. Right now, you can hear some healthy boos earlier when these teams were introduced. It's been a very streaky series. And keep in mind that a major upset has not been pulled off since 1975 when an 0-5 Florida team beat a 5-0 Florida State team. And it's the Gators trying to pull off the upset tonight. They are 17-point underdogs. I kind of like it up here, Roger. It's a little less cluttered than the sidelines. Back to you guys. Okay, thank you very much, Chris. Keep in mind, though, the last three games played here at Doe Campbell Stadium have been in quagmires. A lot of rain in Florida won all three of those. Tonight, beautiful weather, no rain in sight. ESPN's presentation of CFA football is brought to you by Cinemax, the paid TV channel that gives you more movies, more choice. By Wang Laboratories, Wang makes it work. And by Atra Plus, Gillette made it smoother. Florida, 
Florida State, the final regular season game of the year, coming up next. You know, they figured out cinema has around 130 different movies a month. I tell them big movies, exciting movies, funny movies. Now, Showtime, on the other hand, has half as many. How are they able to do that? The Showtime call up and go, excuse me, can we have a month that has less days in it, please? No, I'll tell you how they do it. They show more repeats. They show the same movies over and over again. And there's nothing you can do about it. You can't say, please show me another movie. Please, I know all the dialogue to this movie. So, was the army what you expected? Well, I joined for the college money. But you know, I'm getting more than that. The GI Bill and Army College Fund. Qualify and you'll get over $25,000 for tuition and an edge on life. Wanted. NFL seeks brilliant coach. Can you outsmart your opponent with a strategy you plan from 20 offensive and 12 defensive play formations? Well, here's your proving ground. With over 200 NFL highlights. Play action VCR football from Epics. Lovely. I hope you like it. It reminds me of when we first got electric light back when I was a child. Oh. <laughs> Daddy used to draw his chair up to that light and read to him. Oh, the memories. But Harold, this is the 80s. <laughs> and I wanted a Bud Light. If you want the one light oh. that outshines them all, ask for Bud Light. Kill the light, will you, Harold? Oh, because everything else is just a light. Looking at Chief Osceola, the horse is named Renegade, and Lee Corso, you're familiar with that, Quinnell, aren't you? Oh, it's a great tradition here. The, the horse will run out, Chief Osceola will get everybody fired up, and he'll throw the flaming sword in the middle, and everybody will go crazy, and then, oh, what a great moment it is for college football right, right now. Both teams still out in the middle of the field as the captains were there for the coin toss. Florida won the toss, and they deferred, and Florida State will receive the opening kickoff. And, Lee, that's happened almost every game we've done this year. The reason you do that is because you want to see how the game's going to flow. So that's why you can come out of halftime, and you know right then you can either get the ball or if it's a weather situation, you might have to, to kick it off. It's temperature is perfect. 68 degrees. The wind south, 10 to 15 miles per hour. You saw the humidity, 65%. Now he comes off the horse here. It's the first time, the last part of the year, the last game, he jumps off the horse. Notice that the Florida Gators are out there. All right. teams take the respective sidelines and always an emotional moment in this Florida Florida State matchup as we talked at the top the 31st meeting between these two teams this was originally a, a girls school that's why Lee Corso came here to play football you got it <laughs> Florida leads 22 7 and 1 Florida's won the last three games in Tallahassee as we mentioned in the last meeting Last year in Gainesville, Florida State, 28 and Florida 14. That's the first game that uh, Galen Hall lost as a head coach at the University of Florida against Florida State. And what do you call this battle in-state rivals? JS games, job savers. Now, maybe because of what the president said, this won't be a JS game for Galen Hall, but you know it's not for Bobby Bowden. There's a look at Galen Hall, who, of course, replaced Charlie Pell 
back in the 85 season for the final three games. In 86, he went 6-5, and five, and 87, or excuse me, they went 9-1-1, nine, nine, one one, had that great season back in 85, replaced Pell in 84. And then in 86, 6-5, six last year 6-6, six six, losing in the Aloha Bowl. They've already accepted a bid to the All-American Bowl, where they'll play Illinois, and was given the vote of confidence last week. And, of course, Bobby Bowden, how much more confidence do you need? All you have to do is look at that record in 13 years. But he lost six straight ball games to Florida previous to last year. Francis will kick it off. And down on the near side for Florida State. That's Keith Ross. And he's across the 30 to the 32-yard line. 27 yards on the return. Chip Ferguson's the quarterback from Charlotte, North Carolina. The running backs are Dane Williams and Sammy Smith. The wide receivers, Terry Anthony and Ronald Lewis. The tight end is Tom O'Malley. The center, Michael Tanks. The guards, Mike Morris and Jason Kuypers. The tackles, Joey Ayanata and Pat Tomberlin. Florida State University will have the ball, but a penalty marker is down. And a personal foul against the University of Florida. And that gets this crowd incited even more if they weren't making enough noise already. Sometimes the officials will do that early in a ball game like this to try to keep control of the ball game. That gives Florida straight great field position at their 48 yard line. Movement up front by Florida, and Ferguson's got a free play as flags are down. He is not a running quarterback as he slides safely into the 45 yard line as we'll check out the Florida defense for you. Jeff Roth is the nose guard. Guys on the end, tremendous. Trace Armstrong, Rondi Weston, 13 sacks between them. The inside backers, Joey Nicoletto and Pat Moore, their leading tackler. On the outside, Owen Bartriff and Huey Richardson. The secondary, Richard Fain and Kerry Watkins, the corners. And the safeties, Godfrey Miles and Bill Lang. Miles taking the place of Lewis Oliver, who's out with a dislocated elbow, but we expect Oliver to play tonight. Miles, an interesting story, a converted linebacker. A five yards stepped off against Florida, so they've opened up the game with consecutive penalties. You see Ferguson, 62.9% of the completions, 13 touchdown passes, and 10 interceptions. It's first and five with the 47 of the Gators. Screen, Sammy Smith. And he's to the 41 yard line. Jerry Odom, 57, inside linebacker, makes the stop, and that's a first down. Interesting call there. The reason why they call a screen early in the game is because the Florida defensive line, like 93, Armstrong going to rush the passer. Nice little screen play. Smith catches the ball with good hands and goes down the sideline. Nice call by Bobby Bowden to keep that pass rush off of Ferguson, the quarterback. First and 10, 41 yard line. Split backs. Smith on the draw, and he's done right at that 41-yard line. Florida, what have they done this year? They're second in passing defense, second in total defense, third in scoring defense, and 12th in rushing defense. But, Lee, they haven't been able to put any offense to go with that defense. Because Emmett Smith has been hurt. When Smith's in there, Florida is an outstanding offensive team. Without him, they're below average offensively, and they put too much pressure on that great defense. Loss of one on that last play is Jeff Roth, the nose guard, got in on the tackle. Both wide receivers split to the top of your screen. This is Dane Williams. And Williams, he's met there by Joey Nicoletto, the inside backer, a senior from Tampa. 66 tacklers coming in to this game and an outstanding performance. Nice call here. Draw play to Williams, the fullback. The reason why Bobby Bobby went to a screen first and a draw second is to keep the pass rush of the lineman from Florida down. But Nicoletto stepped right up and read it perfectly. Third down and 11 now. Terry Anthony splits to the top of the screen. Ronald Lewis to the near side. He's got his fullback, Dane Williams, inside the 30 to the 29, and that's a Florida State University first down. 12 yards on the pickup, and just the fourth pass reception by Williams, the senior from Leesburg, who goes 6'1 and 220. 
And speaking of Williams, he was the fourth receiver. Ferguson looked left, right, middle, and then dumped it off to Williams in the right flat. That was an excellent play by Ferguson to find the open man. First and ten at the 29-yard line. Wide receivers to the top of your screen. Lawrence Dossie's in there now, number 29. And that's where Ferguson goes to Dossie. At the 25-yard line, he's met by three white-shirted players, including Richard Fain, the left cornerback over there, number 28, and also Godfrey Miles. Miles is number 98, he's 6'1", 224, a sophomore from Miami, as Dossie leads Florida State in touchdown receptions with eight. Folks, he's got 16 catches on the year. Every other time he gets his hands on the football, it's for six. So if that percentage he works out, watch him for a touchdown coming up soon. Dossie and Anthony split to the near side on second and six. Sammy Smith inside the 20 on another Florida State first down. Huey Richardson and Rondi Weston in on the stop. This is a young man, Sammy Smith, who when the year began was touted as a Heisman Trophy candidate. It's been a disappointing year. And that's why he might turn professional. He's, it's a good handoff right into Smith going off the left side of the line. Number 65, Haynes, pulls in there and drives him forward. Number four, Watkins comes up. But anytime a back like Watson has, Watkins has to make a tackle eight yards down the field, that means you're running through the offensive line is run over the defensive line. First and ten at the 18-yard line. Blitz coming. Dossie at the 15. Dossie inside the 10. Dossie! Touchdown! a touchdown pass round level nice little bootleg action remember we talked about Dossie every other time this was the second time he touched the football and what did he do he scored great effort great balance watch him all he needs to do is cross the line his knee might have been down might have gotten it, down at the one but it's played in Tallahassee that means it's always Richie Andrews for the point after he's hit 50 of 51 this year and make it 50 run after catching the ball watch this one of the things you teach the deep offensive receivers is once you catch the football you immediately turn into a running back remember Dossie 50 percent of the times he touches the football he scored this was the second time he touched it today Ferguson's hit his first four passes and lead the athletic ability by the balance shown here. That's a drill you run in practice, isn't it? And I tell you what, you can run it all day long, but the best way to get that kind of balance is to recruit it. <laughs> There's Lawrence Dossie, 17 receptions, nine touchdowns this year. That is being very efficient in your passing game. And as I mentioned, Ferguson completed his first four passes. He is fourth in the nation in passing efficiency. And in the Florida State passing game league, they may not be the top passing team in the country, but they're only behind Washington State University in number of yards per pass. They get over eight and a half yards every time they catch the football. And one of the things, the reason why they do that is because they throw the ball downfield. And downfield is Chris Fowler. Chris? Okay, Roger. Howard Dinkins is now sitting up. He did not move for a long time. Trainer is very careful, but there you see him. He is up and gets the ovation. He really got clocked on that kickoff return play. I felt, Lee, that you could never pay a professional or give enough scholarships to somebody to play on special teams anyway. A tough job, and Florida's got a tough job here. First and ten, it's at midfield. Morris has got a receiver to tight end McGriff. Inside the 25 to the 24-yard line, 26 yards on the reception by McGriff and defensively for Florida State. Odell Higgins is the nose guard. Eric Hayes and Steve Gabbard, the defensive tackles. The backers on the inside, Kelvin Smith and Felton Hayes. And on the outside, for the Knowles, Shelton Thompson and John Hatton. The secondary, what else can we say? Deion, Primetime Sanders, and Tracy Sanders, no relation. And the safety, Stan Shiver and Leroy Butler. First and 10 from the 23-yard line. Emmett Smith. He might have gotten back to the line of scrimmage. Kelvin Smith, 36, was there. His 83rd tackle of the year. Smith 
Calvin Smith is from Jacksonville, Florida. Now watch Emmett Smith. He breaks to the outside, gets a good break on it, but from the inside out, number 36, the linebacker Smith came in from the inside out. Florida State is famous for having very fine inside linebackers. Emmett Smith, 10th in the nation in rushing. He's missed two games this year and played in just parts of two others. Second and eight. Open across the middle is McGriff again, the senior from Gainesville, and he's one of those local guys that stayed home. Now, both of these schools have players from Tallahassee and Gainesville, but it, it seems that there are more Tallahassee kids that go over to Gainesville than Gainesville coming to Tallahassee. You see what McGriff's done this year. McGriff family is famous over in Gainesville. His dad played there. He had an uncle play there. He had it, it, the McGriff family is famous for Florida football. Third down and four. Near side, and Ernie Mills had it. He dropped it. There's a penalty marker down. Tracy Sanders, the senior from Bradenton, was on the coverage. Interference on the defense. First down. So pass interference is the call. Florida State and Lee this year if there's one negative about the Seminoles uh, they're averaging almost 80 yards a game in penalties. A lot of the penalties are aggressive penalties and you can't really coach against that. That time it was a very very fine pass by Morris that threw the ball in an area where Tracy Sanders had no way but to get past interference and he's going to knock the ball down. First and 10 at the 10 yard line. They can make a first down as Emmett Smith down to the two. And folks, that's why he was the top freshman in the country a year ago. And there's not four backs in the... Leroy Butler nearly had him back around the 10-yard line, but Stan Shiver got a hold of him and brought him down as he did indeed get it back to the two. It looked like it was a busted play. He tried to get the ball to number 22, Emmett Smith, but did the smart thing when he couldn't get the handoff. Instead of fumble it, Galen Hall has taught these young men to run forward. In their last game against Kentucky, which was two weeks ago, Emmett Smith scored a touchdown in the third quarter. It was the first touchdown that Florida had scored in 11 quarters. They have to take advantage of this opportunity right now on third down from the two. Emmett Smith. He didn't get it. Kelvin Smith was there to meet him head on. Six foot, 235, a sophomore from Jacksonville. That's the way a linebacker is supposed to make the tackle. Watch Smith go over to the left guard, and when he gets hit, he gets knocked backwards. Watch here. Boom. Now, the reason why he got knocked backwards, he's, he's already airborne. But now, in this situation, watch number 36 come from the inside out. Smith, good body position. See how he gets lower? In football, the lowest man wins. Now, Lee, I mentioned that you could get a first down without scoring. They're going to bring the chains in now as Smith, and that's the linebacker's job to lay back there in the goal line defense and wait for that man to jump up. And you see, they've got about eight inches for the first down and about two more inches for the touchdown. They've got to go for it. You've, you've got to come out. Florida has to come out and take this crowd out of the game. They've got to respond. Three points is not worth anything here. Go for it. David Williams, 6'5", 290, a senior from Lakeland, is the left tackle. They have gone that way the last couple of times. Let's see if they do it the third time. Tony Lomax splits out to the far side. Cedric Smith is the fullback, 39. Emmett Smith behind him, 22. Emmett Smith, great second effort in touchdown Florida. He was hit by Kelvin Smith in the backfield and the strong, powerful legs just shed that tackle and he went into the end zone. From the left-hand side of your picture, watch a Florida Gator hit Smith in the backfield right there. 
He hit him in the backfield, but look at the determination. He's got that strong lead, that good body lead. Another shot. Corey the... Freeman, number 10. Okay, number 10. Watch him. He hits him from the in the backfield two yards. He keeps his balance, keeps his going. Good line blocking. Touchdown for Emmett Smith. Point after by John Francis is good. And with 8.26 to go, first quarter, we're tied at 7 in Tallahassee. Oh, there's a relieved head coach. idea behind the Volvo 740 turbo wagon. Nature's light, bathing fields of grain, enriching full fresh hops giving life to sparkling streams, nourishing all the natural things that go into making Bud Light. The light beer that's beechwood aged for a clean, fresh taste that makes Bud Light the one light that outshines them all. There's only one place you'll find the cordless Rotomatic Shaver with three automatic adjustable floating heads for just $24.99. Only one place, and at this price, now, only at Sears. Now there's a football game with all the sound, all the action, the challenge of the real game. Introducing play-by-play -play talking football, the best game next to the real game. Tied up at seven as John Francis kicks it off, and Keith Ross on the near side will let it go out of bounds. They'll throw the flag and step off a few yards against the University of Florida. Both these teams really have had, I want to say, major kicking problems, but it has been a problem especially for Florida. Eight plays, 50 yards, three minutes and five seconds, and Emmett Smith on the fourth down takes it in on the one-yard touchdown run. And what a difference it is having him back. We saw him against Auburn. They had no offense at all. At least with Emmett Smith, they've got something to work off of, a base to go for. Plus, with Emmett Smith in there, they can fake Emmett Smith, and as the game goes along, throw the ball much better. When they were faking to those other backs, the linebackers would just forget it and run back and play pass defense. Bobby Bowden, who will be taking his team to the Sugar Bowl, and John Francis, the junior from Stark, Florida, will tee it up and go again. It's Ross again at the eight-yard line. Outside. At the 40-yard line, he's brought down by John Spirito and Andy Newman. 34 yards on the return. This is what's happening on ESPN. The bowl picture for these two teams, Florida and Illinois, the All-American Bowl in Birmingham, December 29th at 8 Eastern time. And then, of course, Florida State will be playing Auburn in the Sugar Bowl. That won't be on ESPN, but uh, you get to see the Gators again against Illinois. John McAvick did a good job up there. Big 10 against the SEC. First and 10. Sammy Smith. Across the 45 to the 47-yard line, Smith averaging 5.3 yards per carry. He's a junior from Zellwood, 6'2 and 224. He got off to a slow start this year, Lee, got hurt, was pulled out of the starting lineup, has been very disgruntled as the Florida defense in 88 have held opponents to 19 points and one touchdown in the first quarter, and that one touchdown was here this evening. Uh, Lewis Oliver has checked into the game for the Gators, number 18 at safety on second and five. Smith again. Across midfield and close to the first down at the 48-yard line where Jerry Odom makes a stop. 
he is a fourth year junior so if he would so choose as he's had good numbers against the Gators the last two years he could be eligible for the NFL draft next year and I think he'll go because one of the reasons why he'll go is that Sanders as I said in the opening will win the Heisman Trophy he can't win that number two running backs are always afraid Roger of ripping their knees up and when they rip their knees up they're done so I think Smith will go to the pros after the bowl game against Auburn third and one Dane Williams, first down, Seminoles. Florida State, sixth in scoring offense in the country, averaging 39 points a game. Dane Williams, short yardage man, a senior from Leesburg, good blocker. It's an important factor to have a man like Williams in the back when you got a superstar like Smith because there's only one ball. And you can't give it to both guys, so you've got to give it to Smith, and Williams has got to block. Bruce Lesane and Dossie split to the near side on first and ten. Blitz by Florida. Smith. Sammy Smith to the 37-yard line. Kerry Watkins makes the tackle after the gain of nine. He's a big, strong running back with good moves, and when he's healthy, he's as good as anybody. And he's got nice block in there. Number 62, Kuypers, really does a nice job of moving his man back. 72, Tumberland, 6'4", 305, moves the whole left side back. And then comes Smith. Nice little movement. Notice the two great runs by the Smith guys. It looks like it's a battle between Sammy Smith and Everett Smith So who's going to be the star of this game. Second and one. Dane Williams. Inside the 35 to the 33 in Florida State. They got themselves another first down. As Tim Paul, 99, a freshman from Miami, made the tackle. I'm just wondering with Sammy Smith if he has a big game tonight. And then maybe a big sugar bowl. If maybe he wouldn't decide to come back for another year. That would give him the impetus to come back and have a great season as Florida State offensively, sixth in the nation, as you mentioned, scoring offense, 13th in passing offense, and 14th in total offense. Smith, five carries and 24 yards, first and 10 from the 33. Sammy Smith. Good tackle on the far side of the 32-yard line by Kerry Watkins, a junior from Pensacola. He's only 5'10 and 191, but he stood Smith straight up and drove him out of bounds. The interesting thing about the play calling now by Bobby Bowden is that he's actually challenging the University of Florida at their strength. In other words, they're supposed to be great defensive people against a run. Let's find out, Bobby said, if you're good enough to stop us. Do you study generals? Did you do that when you were a coach in, in battles and... I never did that as much as guys like Bob and Woody Hayes, but I think they really do believe that that helps them. Second down and nine. Ferguson. Oh, nearly picked off. Bill Lang. The free safety was right over there as the pass was intended for Terry Anthony, and Lang had nothing but green grass in front of him. And Lang, who had nine tackles against Florida State last year, is from Castleberry. Florida, but you know what? I never did like guys to wear gloves in 90 degree temperature. He's got blue gloves on as if it were playing the Minnesota Vikings up in Minnesota. I can't believe that. You made your point, that's for sure. <laughs> Third down and nine. Penalty markers down. Ferguson. Oh, he's got him at the 15 yard line. That's Ronald Lewis. There's another penalty marker down, one at the line of scrimmage, which was Florida offsides, and another marker down around the 15-yard line. Bill Lang made the stick there on Ronald Lewis, 17 yards. If they're both live ball foul, foul. Up high, on the defense. Holding, on the defense. It's, it's against Florida, so they're both penalties. Now, we got number seven, Lewis finds the open spot, but he gets hit by the Lang from the inside. What Florida State does better than anybody, they read coverages. They read this as a zone Lewis did, and he found up a little spot to hook in, and he knows he's going to get hit, but he still catches the football. They distribute their offense very well. Lewis now with 25 catches on the year. Dossie, 16 receptions, 31 for Anthony, 22 Lassane, O'Malley, the tight end, 14. They called themselves the three amigos at one time, the wide receiver, but when they had the addition of Dossie, the sophomore, well, they had to come up with another. They're just four great ones is what they call it. First and ten now, Florida State. Down the middle, wide open, a 
touchdown, Tom O'Malley. Second touchdown reception of the year for the senior from Darien, Connecticut, 15 yards. From the end zone, you're going to watch this. It's coming right into your living room. It's a nice little bootleg, which means you're going to fake Smith one way. Number 92, O'Malley gets right in the seam. If you notice, he got right between the two defensive backs. Number four, Watkins recovered, but not quick enough. Touchdown, O'Malley. Richie Andrews. Makes the extra point. And 4.56 to go. First quarter, Florida State leads it by a touchdown. Lathrop, Westbrook, Manchester, and Hoffman. Engine 67 northbound, 68 southbound, off I-95. Captain Cam here at Toyota of Old Saybrook, where you're going to buy your next new Toyota. That's right. Now you can buy an 88 Toyota under our port of entry price. That's a savings of over $6,000 off MSRP. You want more? Get 8.9% financing on every new Toyota in stock. Drive a little, save a lot. See you, Toyota. Engine. Volvo ever requires some technical assistance to properly show its multi-link independent rear suspension, the brain center of its anti-lock braking system, the power of an intercooled turbo, and the engineering responsible for its driver's side airbag. But the Volvo 780 isn't just state-of-the-art, it's art. This is Gator Bean. Now, when they serve it in Gainesville at restaurants near the campus, it is a delicacy. But when they eat it in Tallahassee, it has a different meaning. They love to devour Gator Meat here. The football team had it for Thanksgiving dinner along with their turkey. Let's see if the students like it. Here we go. I think they like it, guys. Look up there. Okay, thank you very much. Chris Short, line drive kick, and an up back for Florida. That's Curtis White. Dropped at the 23 yard line, make it the 24, excuse me. Replays of the touchdown. Watch the bait. Number 33, Smith is the bait. Fake to Ferguson to the right. He throws to O'Malley in the middle. Touchdown. Now, watch number 60. Number 60, Morris pulls out there and gets a good block on this one. You'll see him on the top hand left hand side of your picture. Watch. Number 60 pulls out, gets a good block right here, but Ferguson rolls out and he pays for this one, but. Let me tell you something, it was worth the hit by Weston for the touchdown for Florida State. Ferguson, 6-7, six 73 yards, two touchdowns as McGriff goes in motion. First and 10 for Florida. Intercepted. Intercepted at the 25-yard line. John Hadley, the senior outside linebacker from Orlando with his first interception of the year. Morris goes back. Remember we talked about the show that we were going to try to get the ball to Emmett Smith? A little bit too much this time. They threw the ball right to Hadley, who had perfect coverage. Now, notice the eyes of Morris. He was bird-dogging, or he was looking at Smith the entire way, and that's why Hadley could get the interception. 17 interceptions on the year for the Florida State secondary. As Hadley gets his first pick, and the goal is first and 10 at the 25. Yard line. Dane Williams right up the middle. They've established him on the inside as he gets down to the 21 yard line of Rondy Weston. 68 makes the tackle. They've been able to establish that inside game with a quick handoff to Williams, and Smith has done his thing a little sidestep to the outside. They've had a nice complimentary offense this evening, Lee. Bobby Bowden, as I said at the beginning of the show, he calls as good a game as there anybody in college football. He keeps them off balance. That's the secret to Bowden's mind. 
Anthony and Lewis split to the near side on second and seven. Sammy Smith inside the 15. Look at him carry people down to the 10-yard line. First down, Florida State. Let's go to Tim Brando. Tim. All right, Roger, we're going to keep it in the intrastate mode from Florida to Arizona. Arizona State's Bruce Perkins goes 45 yards for a touchdown, and the Sun Devils lead Arizona 12-7. Hard to believe one of those two Pac-10 teams isn't in a bowl. Only three Pac-10 teams in bowl games. Five out of the Big Ten are going, Roger. Thank you, Sam. Yeah, both those teams have six and four records, and Arizona's dominated that series in recent years. We got first and ten here at the 11-yard line. Smith inside the 10, down to the 8-yard line. 3.33. Left to go, first quarter. Bobby Bowden has got one thing going for him that is really hurting Florida right now. He's got so many weapons in his arsenal. He's got a quarterback to control. He's got wideouts that can catch. He's got a great fullback up the middle, and he's got a superstar named Smith. I mean, it's almost physically impossible to stop Bobby, Bobby Bowden with his imagination when he's got great players. Lewis splits to the near side on second and seven. Going to Anthony. No. No good. Kerry Watkins has played a whale of a game so far. It was over on the coverage for the Gators of Florida. Number four, Watkins from Pensacola against Anthony, number eight from Ta Daytona Beach. A nice little play-action play, faking that ball to Smith again. He drills the ball, Ferguson does. Nice play right there by Watkins, who strikes and takes the ball away from Anthony at the last minute. There's a look at Kerry Watkins. Chip Ferguson, by the way, missed that South Carolina game, and all Peter Tom Willis did was come in and lead him to a 59 to nothing victory. That's depth, third and seven. They've completed nearly 50% of their third down opportunities this year, and Sammy Smith with a high step of touchdown Florida State. of the year for Sammy Smith, his third touchdown pass tonight. If you'll know on the right-hand side of your picture, Smith is wide open. You'll say, I wonder why he's wide open. The outside man went to the inside, and two Florida men took the bait. Smith went in for the touchdown. Can you imagine how good the University of Miami Hurricanes must be to shut these guys out? Richie Andrews is good for the third time. 2.56 to go. First quarter. Florida State leads Florida 21-7. Be with us tomorrow. NFL game day. Of course, Chris and Tom and Axe. Then at 7 Eastern time, NFL primetime. John Saunders will join the crew. Keep you up to date on everything that's happening in the NFL. And then, of course, at 8 o'clock, Mike Patrick, Joe Theismann, the New York Giants, and the New Orleans Saints down in New Orleans for our NFL game. And when you're watching that, excuse me, Rod, when you're watching that game, you'll see a similar offense than Florida State use. That's why a lot of pro owners are looking at Bobby Bowden to be the next pro football coach out of college football. But he has told us he's not interested in the pro job. He was interested in the Alabama job, though, a couple years ago. He would have taken it in a heartbeat. In fact, he told us that on Friday night prior to the announcement of Curry being the coach that they offered him the job. He got up the next morning and didn't have the job. You don't understand why. Not that he doesn't like Florida State. But he's from Birmingham. And Alabama. I mean, he's an Alabama guy. He's got Alabama blood in him. There's Richie Andrews. He's a sophomore from Fort Lauderdale. There are so many kids in this game that have played against each other in high school. I mean, some of them are seeing each other for the eighth, ninth year in a row. And that's a short kickoff that's going to bounce out of bounds on the near side. So they'll do it all over again. They talk about high school football talent in different parts of the country. The three states that immediately come to mind are Florida, California, and Texas. But Florida, with so many kids, on the Florida State, Florida, and Miami rosters in state. And then you look around at Big Ten teams and the independence up east. It's an amazing place, isn't it, really, for high school football? And one of the reasons why is they have spring practice here. 
people don't understand that spring practice is very important if you're going to become a greater football player because it gives you more time to practice. Other states do not have spring practice, and that's why they're behind in Florida people. I'm sure glad they didn't where I was from. I never liked spring practice anyway. Chip Ferguson's at it. Just two incompletions so far tonight. So eight of nine, three touchdown passes. He's so wide open, you, you can see, why did they break the coverage? The, the coverage was broken because of a finely designed play that sent the outside man, see the outside man go the inside, and that's why he's wide open. But the thing I liked about Smith right there, and his price just went up, did you notice the way he caught that ball with his hands? Five plays, 24 yards, a minute and 49 seconds on the interception by Hadley, and then Smith, the eight-yard reception from Ferguson. Ferguson, seven of nine, three touchdowns, as Andrews, another Kind of angling soccer style kick and I don't know what the problem is with the kickoffs tonight Lee but neither guy has really hit it very well but one of the problems with that kickoff is the fact they're trying to keep the ball away from number 20 Lomack who, who almost went all the way and they're getting a little bit too fancy well Florida's seventh in the nation in kickoff returns they average over 23 yards a return but do you ever get to the point where you really can you tr can you avoid a guy? I mean, do you have a kicker that, that that's that good that he can angle the ball to a certain spot? Most of the time you don't, but if you do, you don't kick the kind of kick he's kicking. You kick a squib kick that goes down on the line. Galen Hall just got a first down. Lomax's first return was for 46 yards, and oh, we appreciate the the support. We were mentioning the uh, homegrown players. Now, this includes kickers, 20 of 24 for Florida. You see the out-of-staters there. Florida State starts 21 of 24, and the out-of-staters, Ferguson's from North Carolina, O'Malley's from Connecticut, and DeBard from North Carolina. Richardson's from Atlanta, Armstrong's from Birmingham. They're close by, but it is the hotbed of high school football. And Kyle Morris is from Mississippi, so he's not too far away. Yeah, and his dad played for the University of Florida. Does that count? Absolutely. It's like you never left. <laughs> So Andrews will try it again. Now you've got Lomax standing at the 15-yard line. I don't know. I think you'll just try to kick it down there as far as you can, huh? Now Lomax, well, the up-back's going to take it. That's Curtis White. That's the second return he's had. Now penalty marker goes down at the 32-yard line. Marion Butts came down to make the tackle on the special teams. So, they got a couple of penalties for kicking it out of bounds and then a penalty flag thrown on the return. Buddy Ward's the referee, Tommy Rose the umpire. Watch the pursuit. Count the number of men in garnet jerseys after number 31, Butts makes the hit. You'll see a whole bunch of garnet standing around them what'd you look for in a special teams player your, your headhunter so to speak well first of all he probably didn't have very good grades <laughs> and the second he's usually in the linebacker position first and ten for the gators at the 16 yard line morris is checking off now at the line of scrimmage emmett smith he's to the 19 did you see how Morris had to walk over and get behind his guard and tackle and tell him what was happening? Because the, the noise is so loud here tonight at Doe Campbell Stadium. He thinks the noise is loud there. Wait till he gets to the other end where the Florida State fans are. They're quiet. Listen, he's at the Florida side right now. Little fans there on this Thanksgiving weekend. Hope you all had a nice Thanksgiving. We're glad to be back from Ireland. We had a good time over there. Hope you're enjoying the game so far tonight. 21-7, first quarter. Second and six for the Gators. Emmett Smith at the 21-yard line. Eric Hayes, 78. And also coming up to help out on the tackle was number 53, Odell Higgins. And now they seem to know what Florida is going to do because Florida has been giving the ball every time to Emmett Smith. One of the things Florida's doing, though, that I like is they're not panicking. 
You know, it's 21 to 7. They don't throw the ball just every down because it could be 28 to 7, and they're really deal behind the eight ball. Third down and four. Three wide receivers now for the Gators. Thunder. Morris picks it up. He's got time. Well, he was trying to get it to Willie Sneed, number nine, on the far right side, and he overthrew him. So, a miscue between Kyle Morris and Tracy Daniels. You see Galen Hall on the sideline that time? He aged one year on this play. When that ball was bouncing around, he was fortunate enough to pick it up. He kept his composure and threw it out of bounds so they could punt the ball. John Francis will punt. He's averaging 36 yards a punt. He's standing in the seven-yard line. And primetime Deion Sanders is going to have a chance to show you all what he can do. Just take a look. To the 39-yard line. And that was with no blocking. Brent Ellis brought him down 48 yards on the punt. Look at Sanders, first in the nation. He's brought a couple back for touchdowns. The amazing thing about Sanders is the fact if you look at after he catches the ball, there's no Garnet jerseys. They try to block all the punts, and that leaves him with nobody there to help block him. But he gets away from two, three, up oh, the sixth man finally got him. That's the first time we've called his name tonight. He has been in there on defense, folks, but they don't even bother going there. He's that good. First and ten from the 39. Ferguson going for his wide out Bruce Lesane and Kerry Watkins, who seems to be everywhere tonight for the Gators defensively, was on the coverage. Watkins, number four, is going to the short side of the field, and Florida State right now is picking on the short side of the floor of the defense because they're a half a man short to that side. Second and ten. This has been a long first quarter, hasn't it? <laughs> Gosh. That's Dexter Carter, number 13, who's come in to give Sammy Smith a rest. Carter's a junior from Baxley, Georgia. Much different sort of back. He's only 5'9", 168 pounds, but so far this year, he's averaged six yards per carry with over 320 yards now rushing on 53 carries. He's got 4-3-4 four, four speed, one of the fastest men ever to play at Florida State University. It's third and eight now, 32 seconds left to go first quarter. He had a good game last year against the Gators. Draw play. Doesn't get much. Carter was the ball carrier, but he didn't get very far at all. Nicoletto, 49, was right there on him. It also was 68, Rondi Weston. And that'll bring up a punting situation for the Seminoles of Florida State. And the end of the first quarter, Florida State leads at 21-7. By signing up now in the Army's delayed entry program, any skill training I choose is mine when I graduate. Guaranteed. Be all that you can be. Get it in our life in the Army. Don Mallard, captain of the U.S. video game team. When I'm not going to high scores in the arcades, I'm home playing games on my Atari 7800. As an expert, I like the 7800 because there are great arcade hits like Mario Brothers and Donkey Kong Jr. Adventure games like Impossible Mission, sports games like Hat Trick and Real Sports Baseball, action games like Desert Falcon and Karateka, and the 7800 plays all the 2600 games. As a consumer, I like the 7800 because most games cost under 20 bucks. The Atari 7800, the choice of the experts. How does the CFO of Porsche stay ahead of the competition? AT&T. For the highest performance long distance service, make sure you hear. Thank you for using AT&T. When the president of Walt Disney World goes around the world, how does he get back to Main Street USA? AT&T. For easy access to our operators from overseas, make sure you hear. AT&T USA Direct, may I help you? When unexpected events leave you battered, bruised, and bewildered, it's soothing to know that MetLife works hard to pay your claim promptly. Get Met, it pays. 
I'll show you a morning like you've never seen. I'll show you a land where there's still room to dream. And you'll find the wonders that I've always known. Cause I call Australia home. ESPN is your ticket to the NFL when the Giants and Saints go head to head. The Giants' tailor-made defense looks to cut down the opposition after last week's unbelievable game. The Saints continue their march for their first division title. The New York Giants and New Orleans Saints battle head-to-head -head on NFL Sunday Night Football at 8 Eastern, live on ESPN. Tim Corlew averaging just 35 yards a punt this year as neither punter on uh, either team really doing much. Gary Watkins back at the 10-yard line. The Gators is Corlew at the 27. And I'll tell you what, Florida was coming hard that time. Watkins at the 17. And he is stuck at the 20-yard line. The first man to hit him there was David Whittington. Let's go down to Chris Fowler. Okay, Roger. That's Jeff Roth, the nose tackle for Florida behind him. He took an eye, or rather a finger to the eye. He had an ice pack on his face. Uh, where do you see the ice pack? Doctors say they're going to check it out. He may be able to go back in there. It's not a serious injury, but you know how painful that can be to get a finger in the eye. I'll tell you, when you're a nose tackle, you get a lot of things in your face. And that's why a lot of the linemen now are going to those dark bather right. shields. So they don't have to get hit in the eye with fingers. We start the second quarter. Florida State leads it 21-7. And the Gators have a first and 10 from the 22-yard line. Lomax in motion. Morris. It was caught. It was caught on the far side by Lomax, and they say no, he was not in bounds. The pass was tipped. Lomax was able to catch it. But they said that. He was not in bounds. Stan Shiver was the man over there on the coverage. First quarter rushing yards, 18 for the Gators, 51 for the Seminoles. Passing yards, 31 and 81. You see the totals, 132 to 49. But that's a lot better than Florida's done in a lot of games this year. The reason is also they're getting a little bit better balance with Smith in the throwing game. They just can't get too conservative because Morris threw an interception. Don't worry about it. Throw it again. Second and 10. Willie McClendon, the freshman from Jacksonville, gets maybe a yard. Steve Gabbard, the senior from Charlotte. Excuse me, Concord, North Carolina. Makes the tackle. This is how the scoring went. Dossie, the 18-yard touchdown pass from Ferguson. Florida State led it. Then Emmett Smith on the one-yard run on a fourth down play. Tied it up at seven. And then they went back to the arm of Chip Ferguson. He hit his tight end O'Malley from 15 yards out. And then... The eight-yard touchdown reception by Sammy Smith. That's where we're at. It's third down and nine for the Gators. Lomax in motion. Penalty marker. Morris is dumped, and it was Shiver, 37, who came busting through to drop him. That's his fourth sack of the year, but another penalty marker was thrown. Shiver might have got a piece of the face mask. On the offense, face mask on the defense, offset, we play the down, third down. So they'll do it again. What happens on a penalty, if they're both live ball penalties, then they negate each other and they'll do it again. That's McGriff, the tight end. It's a left hook. Look like Boom Boom Mancini hitting him with a shot. And Macho Camacho. Howard Dinkins, the young man who was injured earlier, has a sprained neck and will not return tonight. Third down and nine again from the 23. Across the middle. And there, yes, it is a reception. Lomack was there to make the great catch at the 30, but it's going to be short of the first down. Kelvin Smith. The inside backer was on the coverage. Womack number 20 comes from the outside. He gets good pass protection. Morris does. 
as he throws the ball a little bit too low. Outstretched hands, great catch by Lomax, but the short by two yards. Now, you've got to be careful when you punt the ball against Florida State because they're famous for blocking them. Francis at the 15, and of course, you just saw Deion Sanders. He's going to have a chance on this one. There's a hole. Oh, he just got tripped up, and a penalty marker's down, and he knew he almost had something. A penalty marker is down, 36 yards on that low line drive punt. Deion Sanders, first in the nation in punt returns. He's brought two back for touchdowns so far this year. Remember, he was talking about what he's a great pro he's going to be for those three reasons? Clipping on the receiving team, 15 yards. Well, he's already said, Deion Sanders, he wants four years, 4.5 million, because he's a defensive back, a punt returner, and an entertainer. 21-7, Florida State leads it. Drive is on. Mazda's year-end sales drive. It's already the biggest sales year in Mazda history, but your Mazda dealer wants to close it out with a bang. So he's making remarkable year-end deals on 323s, on 626s, even on the red-hot MX-6. So get to your Mazda dealers today and drive one home. The year-end sales drive ends soon. See your local Mazda dealer now. Rainy nights aren't much fun. Except when it's pouring inside. Shouldn't your night belong to Michelob Light? I think it's important that customers challenge us because it's, it's, it's key that I can prove to them that what we offer is the best for their business. If you read an ad that says you're going to save 20 or 30% by going to somebody else and you call me first, then that's the best reaction I'm looking for. Because then I can show you how you're not going to save 20 to 30 percent. And if every customer called AT&T before they did anything, we'd have very few customers going to the competition. Wanted. NFL seeks brilliant coach. Can you outsmart your opponent with a strategy you plan from 20 offensive and 12 defensive play formations? Well, here's your proving ground. With over 200 NFL highlights, play action VCR football from Epics. ESPN's presentation of CFA football is brought to you by Mazda and the exciting new Mazda cars and trucks for 1989. By the GE rechargeable battery system. One GE rechargeable battery can be used over and over again for up to four years. And by the U.S. Army. Learn how to get an edge on life. Be all you can be. First and ten, Florida State at their 25-yard line. Sammy Smith to the 30-yard line, a gain of five for the junior. So they've alternated backs, and of course, Bobby Bowden has done that throughout the year. He hasn't just given the ball to one man and let him go the whole night. He'll bring in Carter. Also, Chris Parker, a freshman from Jacksonville, who's done awfully well for him this season. Of course, it's interesting. We had a chance to spend some time with Bobby yesterday. Well, Bobby Bowden, but he's, he also has three sons, Terry, Jeff, and Tommy, all football coaches. Second and four. Sammy Smith again. To the 36-yard line and a Florida State first down, Lewis Oliver, the senior from Bell Glade, who goes 6'2 and 222, finally stopping. Oh, he looks like a good, good-looking running back tonight, doesn't he? Lee? He's a strong running back. They're knocking Florida people right off the line. Number 65, Haynes has got Armstrong to the backside and keeping him backside. Now, look, one of the things you got to understand about Florida, this is a fine defensive front they're running against, but Florida State's also got a great offensive line. Number 18, Oliver, hurt his elbow again, Lee. You know, he's had that dislocated elbow. Uh, he didn't. He hurt that in the Auburn game, which we had, but he continued to play throughout that game, and then he didn't play against Georgia. Wasn't supposed to play against Kentucky a couple weeks ago, but played the whole game, and Galen Hall told us yesterday that he wasn't going to play, but as you said, he's a senior. It's Florida State. Enough said, right? Enough said. That's a first down for the Seminoles. First and 10 now at the 36-yard line. Smith cuts it back to the right. Can he get outside? Sammy Smith to midfield. 
14 yards of the pickup before Terry Watkins finally makes the tackle. I thought I was watching Gale Sayers there for a moment. Now you can understand the frustration of Sammy Smith not being able to win the Heisman. He's a great player. He goes to the right. He stops, goes to the left. Now you know Bobby Brown's got a bunch of tricks, but not this one in his playbook. This is just a great athlete from Zellwood, Florida. What a great move. Now notice one thing also. Notice how he changed the ball. Oh, what a well carries. football player. 63 yards for Sammy Smith. First and 10 from the 50 as Ferguson. Far side, he's got his tight end O'Malley. To the 33-yard line where Bill Lang knocked him out of bounds and the senior, the fifth-year senior from Darien, Connecticut. 17 yards on the reception, and he's had a big night so far. Also, both of his parents are from Ireland. You think maybe they watched our game? Where was he last week? He's watching our game. The 50-year seniors, by the way, you're talking about spring practice, did not have to go through spring practice at Florida State. You That's know why? That's a special thing that Bobby Bowden has for them. Oh, the only reason is Bobby's got so many good football players, he can afford to keep them out of spring practice so he can look at the young ones. First and 10 from the 33. Carter. Dexter Carter to the 26-yard line. Boy, that's two different looks. You've got Sammy Smith, who's big and strong, and he kind of sits back and he watches his blockers. And then you got Dexter Carter, who's only 5'8", and you look for him and you can't see him at all. The secret to this game is that Armstrong, Roth, and Weston, the three fine defensive players from Florida, call themselves the war zone, are getting bombed. They're just getting blown off the ball by the offensive line from Florida. State has just got them control up front, and he who controls the line of scrimmage usually wins. Second and three. Dane Williams to the 19-yard line on a nifty piece of running by the big fullback. Owen Bartram stops him after the gain of seven yards. And I thought those big guys were supposed to be north-south. He did a little east-west on us there. Nice balance attack. Smith, Ferguson, O'Malley, Carter, Williams. You're calling the whole team. That's what makes a job like Galen Hall has to try to stop these guys almost impossible. Lewis Oliver is checked back into the game. First and 10 from the 19. That was Carter again. Trace Armstrong, and we haven't called his name tonight. 93, he's a senior, 6'4", 268 from Birmingham, Alabama. Transfer from Arizona State University. Uh, really a rather unusual, might, might be even a precedent-setting uh, uh, move. Uh, a high school transcript, which was fouled up about five years ago. As you see, he did something this year that no one else in Florida history has done on a defensive line. But he could play anywhere in the country this year except Arizona State, so he transferred to Florida. Second and seven at the 16. And the Gators jump offside, and Carter will take it up the middle as penalty flags go down. But back to that Trace Armstrong story, uh, there was a transcript problem out of high school. It was discovered. It was being worked on. There was a change in the coaching staff at Arizona State. And by the time the new coaching staff discovered outside, it... on the defense. ...and notified the NCAA... They had to do something on it, so they said, you can go anywhere else and be eligible immediately. If you stay at Arizona State, you've got to sit out of here. This guy might be the first defensive lineman taken in the NFL draft. And the pros will get a good chance to look at him because he's playing in two All-Star games. He's playing in the Hula Bowl and the Senior Bowl, and the pro scouts like to go to those games and pick their number one draft picks. So the penalty against Florida, and it's now second and two from the 11-yard line. Lewis and Anthony are the wide receivers. Dane Williams inside the 10, and he should have enough for the first down as he follows Michael Tanks and Mike Morris and Joey Iannata, the left side of that offensive line. We get a shot to watch at number 93, Armstrong, in isolation. There's a little pulling trap. He does a little stunt play, comes all the way and makes a good play. But the problem with Trace Armstrong right now is not Trace Armstrong. It's the fact that Florida State has so many weapons that Trace Armstrong and the rest of his friends have no idea where Florida State's going to hit him. Well, part of Florida's best offense has been their defense this year. But it's now 21-7, 8-10 left to go first half. Florida State getting ready to knock it in again. 
And other than the Kentucky game where they came from behind in the second half, Florida has not done that this year. On first and goal from the eight, and it's Dane Williams again, right up the middle. Pat Moore, who's the leading tackler for the Gators, makes a stop. Let's go to Tim Brando. Tim. Roger, some wild happenings in Cactus Country. Take a look at this. Ronald Veal with time running out into the half. Little Hail Mary. And it's deflected into the air and caught by Derek Hill. A 55-yard touchdown reception. The Wildcats take a three-point lead at the half over Arizona State. Roger. Whoa. That's a wild one out there at Sam. It usually is. Second and goal from the six-yard line. Ferguson nailed at the 14 by Joey Nicoletto. He was looking for Dane Williams out in the flat, had an idea to throw it, decided to keep it, and it was the wrong decision. Nice little bootleg play. 93, Trace Armstrong, Armstrong forces this play by getting penetration. If you look at the top left-hand side of your picture, he gets penetration, which forces... Ferguson a little wider, and Nicoletto, number 49, comes up and delivers a blow. They need this play, because if Florida State gets hot, they could blow you out as South Carolina. 59 to nothing. Third down, and goal from the 12. Sammy Smith inside. Sammy Smith to the two-yard line. And he was stuck right there by Lewis Oliver. And you want to talk about two evenly matched athletes meeting head on. We had it right there. This Trace Armstrong playing the outside. They, they chop block him. They knock him on his legs. And there Oliver, watch Oliver number 18, hit Smith number 33. This is a major league play right there. And the guy's got a dislocated left elbow. What a magnificent effort. He forces the field goal. Florida State has sent in Bill Mason to attempt the field goal. And from 18 yards out, he's good. And the Seminoles lead it 24-7. Pushing landing zone. Prepare to land. Let's move! Got a connection to make. Give the Army signal corps 30 minutes, and they can turn a mountaintop into a satellite communication station. Qualify for training like this, and you'll learn to work with some of the most exciting high-tech electronics around. Roger, Bravo 26, loud and clear. We got him! Fly! All that you can be! Did well. We're well connected, Sergeant. Find the future in the Army. In order to make gathering around your fireplace more enjoyable this holiday season, remember to gather around ours first. Look for the Michelob holiday display at a store near you. You might expect a guy who flies a jet like this to drive a jet like this. The Mazda MX-6 GT. If you also expect it to fly through the wide open spaces, you're right. But you probably don't expect to find all this wide open space inside. I guess that makes it the one sports coupe which flies in the face of convention. Mazda MX-6 GT, sports coupe, the Mazda way. Now there's a baseball game with all the sounds, all the action, and the challenge of the real game. Introducing play-by-play -play talking baseball. The best game next to the real game. Roger Twaba, Lee Corso, and Chris Fowler with you at Doe Campbell Stadium in Tallahassee where the Seminoles have a 24-7 lead and Richie Andrews kicks it off and Lomax, they fake the reverse and Lomax got room to the near side at the 40-yard line. He's knocked out of bounds, 34 yards on the return. Let's go down to Chris Fowler. Chris? Well, the Gators will take it now. First and ten with 5.52, and this is critical, Lee, for them to get something on the board here. At least three. 24-10's not bad. Lomack is an excellent kickoff man. He's returning. That's why they were scribbling those kicks before. Barber and Sneed split to the top of your screen on first and ten from the 40. Now Morris is checking off at the line of scrimmage. And a penalty marker goes down. He's got a man wide open, and it was Willie Sneed on the far side. 
The penalty will be on Emmett Smith. He was going in motion, but he didn't stop a full second. And that's why it'll be a legal procedure. Illegal motion on the offense. Chris Fowler, go ahead. Okay, Roger. I'm with uh, Officer Beachman of the Tallahassee Police. You'd expect a oh, policeman to be calm and professional. These guys are cheering like crazy for Florida State. Why? Well, uh, when I wear blue, I'm calm and professional, but in this game, it's uh, the game, and I believe going and going, so it's a little hard. Any other game, it's all right, but this game, it's a little hard. Can't be neutral tonight. Not tonight, no. Expect I'm... extra duty because you got all these Gators and Seminole fans together? Yeah, there are a lot of, a lot of Gators in town. We expect extra duty, and uh, most of us are Seminoles anyway. But, uh, we try to remain impartial, but it's impossible tonight. Okay, fellas, there was a riot in 82, so there's potential for some excitement here tonight. Back to you. Okay, first and 15 after the penalty, and that's Emmett Smith, who's to the 39-yard line. I guess the byword tonight is, Lee, whether you're a Gator or Seminole fan, wear that uh, scarlet and gold, and they'll just kind of let you go on by, huh? Anywhere. <laughs> but remember, it's the same kind of treatment when you get over to Gainesville. Those guys are blue and gold. Emmett Smith won over 1,000 yards earlier than any back in collegiate history. Of course, he's had an injury plague season, hurt his knee against Memphis State, missed a couple of games, didn't play much against Georgia. And it's second down and 11 now, with 5.13 to go, first half. They screen over to the far side, Emmett Smith, and a good play over there. Kurt Carruthers, a freshman from East Lansing, Michigan, was able to knock him out of bounds. Let's go to Tim. Roger, I'm going to show you what could be a dying rivalry. LSU and Tulane. The Green Wave has a fine quarterback. They have had a one all year. Terrence Jones. There he goes. 30 yards for a touchdown. The athletic directors of these two schools are at odds over where this game should be played and the payout on gate receipts. Let's get back to Roger. Oh, you hate to see that rivalry in. You got to keep a little tradition in the game, don't you, Lee? Absolutely. Third and nine from the 41. Morris, boy, his receiver, Terrence Barber, never turned around, and Barber is pointing in the direction of Tracy Sanders and says that he was interfered with, and they're going to say the ball wasn't catchable. You cannot have pass in interference without a catchable ball. That the Seminoles put on a full blitz, really put a lot of pressure. Number three, Barber, is man-on-man -man with number 16, Trey Sanders. Sanders has got good football position. The ball is thrown, non-catchable. Now, the question is, was it non-catchable because Sanders knocked him off that? Good point. I think that's what Galen Hall is trying to get across. Francis at his 27-yard line, and Deion Sanders is back at the 24. Good job by the Florida special teams as Sanders is not getting to go anywhere. And there, there's penalty flags now as some John led to some pushing and shoving. And hey, Sanders has got to expect that. What happened all week, Sanders talked about what he was going to do for against the Gators, and it looked like that time one of the Gators just took him and, and probably either twisted his knee or twisted his ankle, and Sanders probably kicked him back, and both guys yelled at each other, and it should be a penalty against both teams. It looked like it was number 38 for the Florida Gators, and that's Willie McGrady. Yeah, see, he's down on the ground, and the guy's turning his ankle yeah. around it. And Dion's saying, look at man, I already got some money in the bank from the Yankees. You know, I gotta go to spring training. <laughs> he goes, and then he's gonna make a decision about his football career. Well, you know, that's one of the few times that the Gators can hit Sanders. He's back to 15 yards talking all the Dead time. Dead ball, personal foul on the return. Dead ball, personal foul on the kicking team. Offset, the first foul. How many times has that happened this year? About 20? Hey, Lee, you and I ought to be here. Well, we're glad to be here, but in Maui, the semifinals, the Maui Classic, Oklahoma and UNLV, and then Michigan and Memphis State beginning tonight at 11.30 Eastern time in Oklahoma, I think has a good shot at the national championship again. Ohio State almost beat them last night on ESPN. It was a terrific game. That's a great tournament. I was over there for that tournament the last couple of years. And, uh, they had a great time at the Lahaina Civic Center. 24-7, Florida State leads Florida here with 4.48 to go. First half. Ferguson now checking off at the line of screen. Sammy Smith. And 
He's across the 25 to the 27 yard line. Tony McCoy, a sophomore from Orlando, number 71, who's checked into the game, was in on the tackle. There's a look at McCoy right there. He backs up Rondy Weston. All the scores and highlights will be along at halftime. Second and seven, and the penalty markers go down. I think that time uh, Florida was kind of faking a blitz, and one of the offensive linemen for Florida State moved. And good, call, right? good call, right? Good call. Ball start on the offense. Those, those, uh, those defensive players are pretty good actors sometimes, and the, uh, the offensive linemen bite on it occasionally. Remember, if an offensive lineman puts his hand down, he cannot move it at all. Now, see the right guard? The right guard, 62, Kuypers, just moved his head in his hand, and that caused the penalty. That's why I always felt it was better to just go up line of scrimmage with your hands on your knees and then have at it. And then if you do stutter, you can just go down and put your hand down, right? Some people like that up stance, Roger, because they can pass protect better that way. The Florida State, if you'll notice, will drop down, and they're in a three-point stance. Second and 12. Ferguson draws to the far side, and it's intercepted. Intercepted on the far side by Richard Fain. Third interception of the year for Fain who just happens to be the man that nicknamed Deion Sanders primetime. He also is the man that intercepted the key pass against LSU to turn the game around. Watch it. Number five, Ferguson gets a good rollout. He bird dogs. Notice how he was watching all the way, and there comes Spain with great closing speed and intercepts the ball. The big thing about that, he got the ball. Good catch. That was the first rollout action for Ferguson tonight also. First and 10 for the Gators at the 35 with a chance to make something happen here in the closing moments of the first half as Emmett Smith trying to hop his way inside the 35 to the 33. Felton Hayes, the weak side linebacker from Brandon, Florida, was there to make sure he didn't go any further. You see Odell Hagen's 53 there. He's been injured a lot this year. Is it a good idea to leave your feet like that on a play like this, Lee? In this case, in this game, it's a good idea to do anything you can. What he's trying to do is jump over the pile, but he gets hit from all different angles. One of the things I like about Smith so much that he's so competitive, he's got that good body lean. He's hard to hurt, except if they get him low and he hurts his knee. Nine carries, 24 yards for Emmett Smith. Second and nine now. 2.55 to go, first half. And they go right up the middle to Cedric Smith. His first carry of the night down to the 20-yard line. And that's a Florida first down, 15 yards on the pickup. His very first time to touch the football this evening. What a great call by Lynn Amity, the offensive coach. They used the same play that Florida State uses, that fullback belly. They used Emmett Smith as the decoy, and boom, off the ball. Daniels made a good block to the inside, but that was a great call by Lynn Amity. First and 10 from the 20. Both wide receivers split to the near side. Emmett Smith with a seam. Smith knocked out of bounds at the 10-yard line, and he'll be just shy of the first down. Tracy Sanders was over there. Emmett Smith's a great football player. You can understand why Florida wasn't very good without him, but they're a terrific team with him. Good block by number 80, McGriff. Watch the stiff arm. All right, a nice little shot at, num at Tracy Sanders. Now, he would love to have this on Deion Sanders, but he gets one of the Sanders anyhow. Terrific forearm by Emmett Smith. Stiff just, arm. Just shy of the first down, second and one at the 11. Emmett Smith. He's to the 10. He'll have enough for the first down. Let's go to Chris Fowler. Chris? Okay, Roger. Lots of emotion on this floor on the sideline. Emmett Smith, before the last possession, was up in his teammate's face, screaming at him, pointing his finger at him, said, I've had enough of this. Let's go. Now, the Florida coaches tell me that Willie McGrady, the backup fullback on the special teams there, has been thrown out of the game. We'll check it out. Keep you posted. But they're fired up on the Florida side now, Roger. Thank you very much, Chris. Of course, McGrady was the man that got Deion Sanders and twisted his ankle around. So it's first now, first and 10. They can get a first down without scoring as they give it up the middle to Cedric Smith. And he gets a couple. 1.57 left to go. Now, Florida State 
has all three of their timeouts remaining and the same holds true for the University of Florida. In play calling here, it's very important. Get the ball in Hamlet Smith's hands. Why? They had fourth down. They got hit two yards behind the last game and still score. But whatever Florida has to do, they've got to get at least three here, Roger. They split Emma Smith now out to the far side. Now he comes in motion to the near side. Morris throwing across the grain. And there were two or three players over in that general direction. One of them happened to be Tony Lomack, but he was looking for Emmett Smith in the far right-hand corner of the end zone. As you see Morris's numbers tonight, he's the guy that came in against Kentucky when they were behind, had a good second half, brought them back for that win, which essentially got Galen Hall an endorsement from the uh, president and athletic director at the University of Florida that he would return next year. He still has three years on his contract. It's an important call. Whatever you do, do not turn the ball over. Get at least three to make it 24-10. Third down and seven. Down the middle, and the pass was badly thrown, and Morris was nailed. Stan Shiver was one of the men back there to hit him. And Morris is not getting up. Shiver, number 37, is the strong safety. And what Florida State did that time, they overload one side. They brought the strong safety blitz and got to the quarterback. McGriff was the intended receiver, the tight end. The ball was thrown behind him. And Shiver came busting through. And, well, Kyle Morris will be attended to. And we've got a official timeout on the field with 119 to go first half and of course now on a fourth and seven from the seven yard line the Gators will uh, attempt the field goal try to cut this thing down to a 14 point deficit the trainer for Florida is Chris Patrick he's the director of athletic training he's been there since 1970 when he came from the University of Kentucky he's one of the finest trainers in America they'll take real good care of Kyle Morris and of course the backup is Herbert Perry, a sophomore from Mayo, Florida, who uh, has alternated this year with Kyle Morris. Morris was a starter earlier in the year, had a uh, hand problem. And while we have this opportunity, we'd like to, of course, uh, give congratulations to the student of the game. Brought to you by the Army Be All You Can Be. And the student of this game is Florida State quarterback, Peter Tom Willis, who uh, just so happened to come in and get a start against South Carolina a few weeks back and lead them to a 59 to nothing victory. So uh, Peter Tom Willis, our student of the game. will come on to attempt the 25-yarder. And it's good. So Francis, now 17 of 24 field goals this year, and it's a 14-point lead. Dentist Ward. Hey, here's good news. Chevrolet's payload payout isn't played out. Forget about the old-fashioned Ford and save up to $2,200 on a full-size Chevy. Well, check out this S Blazer 4x4 or this S10 pickup, and you can save up to $2,400 on either one. With a huge selection and tremendous savings, you'll never get more truck for less money. But you better hustle, because Chevy's payload payout ends November 30th. At your Connecticut Chevrolet dealer. Money-saving coupon towards your next purchase of plaques. Right to this address. And remember, as any dentist will tell you, the number one dental problem isn't tartar, it's plaque. The problem is plaque. The solution is plaques. The incredible pre-brushing rinse that removes 300% more plaque than brushing alone. Plaques. Original flavor and now new soft mint. Removes 300% more plaque than brushing alone. You might expect a guy who flies a jet like this to drive a jet like this. The Mazda MX-6 GT. 
If you also expect it to fly through the wide open spaces, you're right. But you probably don't expect to find all this wide open space inside. I guess that makes it the one sport scoop which flies in the face of convention. The Mazda MX-6 GT. Sports scoop, the Mazda way. John Francis, who just kicked that field goal for the Gators, gets set to kick it off. 117 to go, first half. And Ross to the 29-yard line, so with three timeouts remaining, Florida State can still get something going offensively with a 24-10 lead as the scoring drive. Eight plays, 28 yards, time two minutes. 26 seconds, and the 24-yard field goal by Francis, of course, set up by the interception. Now, most college football teams would go into the shell and try to do a few running plays. Florida State with 112, that's plenty of time. Three timeouts, that's an eternity. They'll come out and they'll try to get another one. Reverse. No, they fake it. Smith still has it. Inside the 30, or across the 30, excuse me, to the 32-yard line, Huey Richardson, the outside linebacker from Atlanta, made the tackle, so they gave it to Smith, and he faked it to the receiver, Ronald Lewis, coming around. As the clock continues to run now, down to 49 seconds to go. This really surprises me. I've seen Bobby Bond, I coached against Bobby Bond when he's in West Virginia twice. I've watched him a lot. I don't think, this is the first time I've ever seen him go into the shell with this much time to try to get, to not get another touchdown. It's curious, isn't it? Now they're going to run it again. Sammy Smith is dragged down from behind now. They're up to the 38-yard line and about a yard shy of the first down. Trace Armstrong made the tackle and with those timeouts remaining, they're going to continue to let the clock run, and I, I agree with you, Lee. I'm very surprised at this. Well, I'm surprised at Bobby Bowden because, first of all, he's got a superior football team. He doesn't want to blow the lead, I know, but he's got Galen Hall on the ropes. But he knows what he's doing. We've reached halftime at Doug Campbell Stadium in Tallahassee, Florida. And Florida State holds a 24-10 lead over the Gators. And let's go back to our ESPN studios and Tim Brando. Tim. All right, Roger and Lee, thank you very much. 24-10, the Seminoles with the lead at the half. Well, this was the day, the day that we would settle a lot of questions looming about college football and its national championship picture as we head for the month of January. Scores and highlights, including the Division I AA, II and III playoffs, when Vino Cook joins me for our college football halftime report. Florida State leads by two touchdowns. Drive is on. Mazda's year-end sales drive. It's already the biggest sales year in Mazda's history, but your Mazda dealer wants to end it on an even higher note with special incentives that can save you hundreds on the world's number one selling sports car, Mazda RX-7. Get to your Mazda dealer's year-end sales drive and drive one home today. The year-end sales drive ends soon. See your local Mazda dealer now. And now, on with the opera. From the people who brought you big screen television, comes the sound to go with it. Frankly, my dear, I don't give a... Introducing Mitsubishi Home Theater System. Now playing at a dealer near you. We've got a great act going. Robert and Rufus. I play the Casio SK-1 and Rufus sings. Problem is, he only sings when he wants to. But with this Casio, I can record a sample of him whenever he's in the mood. Come on, Ruf. Ruf got it. Now whenever I want Rufus to hit it, I just hit this button. Oh, the Casio SK-1 sampling keyboard because the show must go on. You know, Rufus, this act could be a single. America was built on dreams and business is the key. We ensure where America works, we're USF and G. From the mountains edge to the ocean edge, we ensure you every day. We protect what America's made of. We cover the USA. 
Tim Brando back in our college football studios, and the answer as to number one, who would play for it in the big bowls? Who would be the focal point in the month of January? Notre Dame and USC would settle that issue, and once again, Lou Holtz suspended a couple of players. Ricky Waters not in this game, nor was Tony Brooks, his leading receiver and leading rusher. The two coaches were poised. So was quarterback Tony Rice. Look at this. Just the first play, and it's Raheem Ishmael in a 56-yard game. Notre Dame's next possession, and Rice would go to work on the ground. He gets a couple of good blocks, fakes the pitch, and there he goes. 65 yards. The Irish score 7 to nothing. Remember, they've changed on to more of an option-oriented offense. Lou Holtz is one of the best in coaching when it comes to developing offenses for his talent. Rodney Pete, on the other hand, was having problems. Here he is, picked off. That's Stan Smagala, bringing it all the way back. 64 yards. That made it 20 to 7. Reggie Holmes is the extra boy. Watch what happened to Pete on the return as the leprechaun was going into action. Frank Stams clobbers him on a block right here. He was nothing more than a blur at that point. Pete's stats were 23 of 44, 225 yards, two interceptions, no touchdowns. Pete returned to the game, and it was just more of the same. He flips it to Scott Lockwood on the far side here. Lockwood breaks the tackle, has daylight, and he stopped and creamed there. And Lou Holtz is a happy man, and why not? It's 27 to 10, Notre Dame winning the game, setting up the showdown with West Virginia for the mythical national championship most would observe on January 2 in the game that will be played at Tempe in the Fiesta Bowl. After the game, a happy Tony Rice talked with our Chris Myers at the Coliseum. All right, thanks very much, Tim. The Irish eyes are smiling, and so are the eyes of Tony Rice. Congratulations, another special win. Six in a row now for Notre Dame. That's right. Um, USC has a good team and everything, but it seemed like our offense and defense won ever so bad, and just wanted to compete and had a good time. How about the line of scrimmage? It looked like that's where you controlled the game. I think so. First, got to eliminate some time off the clock, because USC has a really good team, and they were staying the ball game pretty good. We just had to run some time off the clock, and that's it. Did you feel a bit ignored or overlooked with all the attention going to Rodney Pete? It didn't really bother me. He He's a good quarterback. I just want to do my job and my job, and that's it. All right, and the thought now, the national championship, one more game. Just got to keep on going. Just keep on peeking at it. That's All right, it. thanks very much. Thanks. All right, Tony Rice with a tremendous run in the first quarter. Notre Dame unbeaten and headed up against unbeaten West Virginia in the Fiesta Bowl. From Los Angeles.